Hey YouTube, I am back with another video and today I am bringing you all along with me while I make candles. I have three different scents that I am going to make and I have six jars here. I am about to take you step by step through my process of how I make my candles for my candle business, Eighth and Ross. Alright, so I have my double boiler method going. I am right now inside of my laundry slash candle space and when I'm in here I use my double boiler if I am in my kitchen working I use my bigger um, melting pot this is 12.70 ounces of wax in here and I have three containers with 12.70 ounces of wax in it My jars are eight ounce jars, but they hold seven ounces of wax in here. So therefore, in order for me to do two of these jars, I need 14 ounces of wax total. So therefore, again, 1270, I am gonna measure out 1.30 ounces of fragrance oil and 12.70 plus 1.30 is 14 ounces. And that is at a 10% fragrance load. I will have the calculation somewhere along the video at some point. So I'm about to put this inside of the double boiler and let that go on ahead and melt. I like to get my wax to 202, 203, even 205. Um, this is coconut wax. Coconut wax, we love the high temperatures. Um, I'm using coconut 83 in case you're wondering. So while the wax is melting, I am going to um, turn it down a little bit so it doesn't have so much noise. But while the wax is melting, I'm going to go on ahead and do what I do with my jars. So the first thing I do, I like to take my alcohol and I like to spray my jars just to get them clean. You know, when they come in the boxes, I don't know where they've been. So I try to make sure that I clean them. Take a paper towel. I don't put a lot of um, alcohol in here. Just a little quick little spray. And just wipe them down really fast. Or slow. I mean, I just move fast, that's all. With this process. And that's what I do. And then this same um, paper towel, I have my wicks. These are CD wicks. These are CD 4s. Um, and I got these from Candle Science. I like to take each one and just clean the bottom of it off really good. Because when you buy your wicks, if you notice, the coating on them comes off inside of the bag, so they can be kind of dirty at the bottom before you stick it to your wick sticker. I don't know if you can see this dark on here, but yeah, it didn't come out of the jars. It came off the bottom of the wicks. So I'm going to take my wick tabs. I don't think you can really see these, but it's two of them on here. I had already got everything together so that this video can kind of be a breeze. It is almost 1 o'clock in the morning right now. I put the wick onto the wick sticker, pull it off, and I put this in here. I know a lot of people use different things to um, center their wicks, but to be honest, I've never got any of those devices because... Um, are those tools because I really don't need them I mean I do pretty good on my own with centering my wicks um, I thought in the beginning hey should I get something should I not should I get something and I'm like honey girl if it's not broke don't fix it okay so I am as of now not in need of a wick sticking um, tool I do pretty well on my own and then aside from that these jars right here that I chose to use um, for my for my um, candles 
they are pretty easy to whip as well because they have a number not sure if you can see but yeah you can see it they have this number right here in the center so that also <laughs> that's like that's like my little cheat um like my little cheat code did you know it helped me to see exactly where the center is for me to center them properly so i like that again i just press down a little bit when i put them in there just to make sure that they are secure I, sometimes these things will pull up i've poured my wax in here quite a few times um in the past and when i um put my wick um secure i don't know what these are called to be honest i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, when I put this in here sometimes, after I pour and I try to like make sure this is still secure, it will lift the whole wick out of there. So I've had that happen to me quite a few times. So I try to make sure that when I do put my wick in here, I press down on them really good to make sure that they're actually sealed in there. And again, right now, I am just making sure that I secure the wick so that... Um, when I pour, you know, it's already locked and loaded in its place where it needs to be. And so now our jars are good to go. And the only thing we're waiting for now is for the wax to get to the desired temperature. And that's it. All right, so our wax is now at 202. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna pour our first fragrance and this is gonna be Mahogany Ocean. Um, this is the new scent to Ethan Ross. I am going to need 1.30 ounces of this wax so that I can make up the 14 ounces for the two seven ounce jars that I am trying to pour. And the way I like to do that is I pretty much just take this container out, sit it on the um, scale, tear out the scale, make sure it's zero, and then I go ahead and pour in my scent like that. Um, I also, sometimes I'll use a cup to measure out the scent and then pour it in there. But as of right now, I am just about to take this out and I'm going to also turn this off because what I did was I took the other two pots of wax and I melted them in my kitchen so that I could get things going. As I mentioned, it was like one something in the morning right now and I still have other things to do before I am able to even go to bed this morning. So we're going to get this done. We're going to remove the digital thermometer and I remove this and just clean it off. Here, I can just move right along to whatever it is that I got to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this container. I clean off the bottom and sit it on here. Tear it out. It comes on. Hit tear. And we're trying to do 130. I try to go kind of slow um, when I'm pouring. Alright, so we got this where we need it to be at. I'm going, I use these little chopstick things here to um, stir my wax with. They come in twos. And I only stir slowly for about 10 seconds. That's it. Coconut wax likes to be poured when it's hot. Coconut wax does well when it's hot. Again, I'm working with Coconut 83. Alright, so I removed the pan so that you guys can see me pour. And I'm just going to get them situated. My jars. My other ones should be coming up on fully melted as well. Alright, so let's pour. Take 
take your time. You don't have to rush when you pour. As you can see, the calculations are perfect. It get me right to where I need to be. And so what I like to do when I'm done with my um, container, with my pitcher, I like to wipe it out. I like to wipe it out, clean out the excess, and then um, spray it with that same alcohol and go on ahead and clean it out for the next batch of wipes that go inside of here. For the next candle session that I do okay I like to have everything clean and I like to do everything as I go again so once I'm done I can get out of this room and go on about my business and do whatever else I got to do all right here is the second batch and I am going to get out the second scent that we'll be using this is a personal blend to Ethan Ross. This is Ancient Kemet. I blended this together and I absolutely love it. It smells absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to turn the scale on again. Tear out my scale. Make sure it's on zero before I go to pouring anything in here. And we need 1.30 of this as well. And I use ounces. This is the top that I really like to use. This kind of top right here because it does not pour out a lot and it makes it easier for you to get to your desired amount. All right, so we have what we need. Again, I take the same stir, stir for about 10 seconds, and again, we are ready to pour. tell you guys it smells so goddamn good in here when you take your time and you perfect what you're doing it really shows in the candles in any type of work that you're doing but for me i'm speaking about candles and i swear it took me like two years to get this business just like up and running and feel comfortable with what i was actually putting out to the people and now I stand behind Aether Ross Candles 100% 10 toes down. Because what I do know for sure is I have done the work. So much trial and error. So many dollars spent trying to test out different waxes to see what I will and what I won't like. And what I do and what I don't want to stand behind and put my name behind. And when I tell you I found my love with Coconut Wax is 83. I found my love with Coconut Wax 83. And it's not the only wax that I love, but I actually fell in love with it first before venturing off to other coconut waxes. And hell, by that time, I had already started my business and was like, you know what? I'm going to keep on doing what's working for me. You know, if they stop selling it, then of course I have other options that I can move to. But for the most part, this is what worked for me and I love it. Again, I am spraying out my picture so that I can make sure it's clean for the next candle session. And I am about to go and get the other candle wax so that we can do the last pour. And this video, I'm going to take you all along the ride with me all the way until I label these jars. So I want, I want you to get the whole experience of how I do what I do, if that makes sense, okay? Alright, so I have the third set of wax. I'm taking my digital thermometer out, turning it off, and putting it where it goes. I do 1.30 of this one, and again, I'm working in ounces.
taking the same chopstick, 10 seconds. Let's pour, and this is the last batch, you all. It smells so good. <sighs> Take your time pouring your wax. You don't have to rush. And here we are. Guys, so it is the next day and I'm just about to take you along with me as I trim my wicks, um, label, and top. That's what we're doing. Today is Saturday and it is freezing here in Atlanta if you ask me. <laughs> I am always cold. They're talking about snow and hey, I'm here for it. I made soup today, some chicken soup. It tastes amazing and yeah. It's definitely a chill day with a little bit of productivity included, you know. All right, got my wicks trimmed, and now I am about to put my tops in there. Here's my little tray with my tops in there. So let's get our labels on here. First, I like to do the bottom labels, which are the warning labels. Labels. Here go my sheet of warning labels. And I just attach them to the bottom and go around. make my warning labels I make all of my labels in um, I think it's called maestro with online labels I have it in the description below what I do to create my labels to design and print my labels so I've been um, so these are the rectangular ones let me see if you can get a better look at it you see those are rectangle and then I have these here that are square. These are my newer ones that I've settled on. I really like these a whole lot. And I already had these made up. Here goes some more Mahogany Ocean for the Mahogany Ocean scent. And that's just how I designed them. 
and then I also decided that the other scent is going to be called Golden Amber and Cashmere so I created that label as well and now we are about to get them labeled okay this is a new scent right here that I am going to um, add to the website the golden amber and cashmere um it's a blend of two fragrances that i felt like i really love and i just played around one day and blended them and i was like hell yeah like this definitely works and then i tried my best to get it on there correctly and straight sticking your labels down if you're not using something that's like helping you just take your time you know um, make sure you're not shaking or anything and you can get it done and here is a different one This is the new scent that we just had shared the other day. And that is it. All right, so this is the finished product. After every batch of candles that I make, I always make sure that I sage over them, say a nice prayer over them, that they make it safely to their new homes. But yeah, we are done. They're so pretty and they smell so fucking lit. Thanks for watching. Peace. So I'm going to take this first um, container. Yes. I see. I see you, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's next? Can you leave me alone so I can finish my video? No, I want no snacks. You're not getting no snacks. Too late for snacks.